All right, here we are at All American Powder Coating of Nampa. I'm here with my boy Ethan. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we got these parts back here. I'll show them to you at the garage with lights and stuff, but uh, everything turned out really good. Looks really nice, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. And I'll tell you the price later. Yeah. I think I said it earlier in one of my other videos, so you might have already caught it. Pretty cheap, honestly. You will get it at the price reveal at the very end. Stay tuned. All right, we're going to go jump in at uh, one of those Aerosport air, air parks. Aero. Aerosport Park, Air Sports. I don't know. We're gonna get hot and sweaty. What is that? Be oh, my finger. Look at that giant box. I mean, that's in the back of my Forerunner. That thing is huge, full of parts. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna unload this bad boy, and uh, we'll have to take everything apart. I already did inventory at the dealership, so everything is there for sure. All right. So we're on to the big day here. We got. Boxes and boxes and boxes and bags and boxes and bags and bags and bags of parts. I'm going to open those bad boys. I'm going to put them on the table, see what we got. And then um, in here is the heated grips. Can't wait for that. I should be able to use them for a few months here while the weather's still chilly, as long as I can get this thing back together quick enough. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys watch me like a kid on Christmas, because there's a lot of stuff to open here. All right, so we got the powder coated parts. They're a little dusty, um, but dang, they're looking really good. So, uh, super nice. I mean, honestly, like, I, I do like the color a lot. It's really, really close. And so if you remember, we had to close the gap here and uh, heated it up and closed it and then uh, got her all beautified. And here's one of the exhaust covers, dusty. But man, this thing turned out really good. The left side passenger bracket. If you remember, it was uh, ground up right here, but I fixed it up, looks really nice. This is part of the um, uh, rider's uh, foot peg. Clean that one up as well too and the left side clutch lever. Looks really good. Ooh, man. Ducati Scrambler. What? $304? Dang, dude. Check these out. Oh, that's pretty cool. Like I mentioned before, um, there's just two plugs on the bike and uh, found out that there's, there's two different uh, types of heated grips if you're looking to order some for your bike. Apparently there's another one that had three wires for, and I'm guessing it had a switch somewhere, but uh, but these ones only have uh, have the two wires. So uh, the control is actually in the cluster in the computer. So much stuff here. Rubber footrest, footrest, rubber, uh, 
Handlebar end caps. Handlebar end caps. This. Yeah. Plug assembly. Oh, this is the top of the brake cylinder, brake caster cylinder cover. That's what that one is. Miscellaneous nuts and bolts, uh, rubber straps. This is the pin, I think, for the left side. Foot rest. Uh, more bolts, more bolts. Here's a uh, actual foot rest right here. There's another foot rest in here. Here is a, oh, this is the top handlebar bracket. I, lo I just ordered the new one, the lower, because I didn't have that. More rubber clips. Here's a, there's that white cap for the headlight bracket that I needed. I got the sticker. The sticker in here is for the fuel tank cover. And then I got an original OEM uh, owner's manual since I didn't have one. So that, that's pretty much, this is all we have to do uh, as far as getting the bike back together. You know, assembling the, uh, the handlebar, of course, is going to be a thing. And then uh, once I put all this together, I'm going to change the oil. I'm going to bleed the uh, rear master cylinder. I'm going to have to bleed the clutch and the front brake uh, system as well. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, I have to make sure I'm going to double check the uh, alignment of the rear chain. I got a pretty cool tool from, uh, let me show you guys this tool real quick. This is from Motion Pro. And uh, it's basically what you do. I mean, you can use this on pretty much, oh man, I broke the damn thing. You can use this on any bike, I think. That anything has a chain, honestly. And really, it's pretty pretty simple that uh, you, tight, you tighten this thing down onto your chain. Right, and you make sure that, uh, I don't know if there's instructions on here, it might be in the back. And then you put your your rod in here, like that. And basically once you put this on your, your rear chain sprocket, I think that's what it is, it goes up to the sprocket. So that's, and then it'll tell you if your chain's like this, well, you gotta adjust your rear wheel so the chain and this is in line with each other. And so you can use it on 50 cc's, you know, your 450s, your, any bike honestly has a chain. All right, so it's not a pretty weld job, but I mean, it's a freaking solid weld job. Like, let's see if you can hear this. That's some solid tink, tink, tink. No freaking hollow light sounding. I mean, I got some pretty good welds here and I bridged that gap. You can see it right there. Um, again, it's not pretty welding or grinding. I mean, you can't do much in here unless you take all this off, which I'm not. So the whole point is that the face touches like it did when I mocked it up. There's clearance on the bottom. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it guys and girls. So what I'm gonna do now is, um, you know, I'd say for most people, I'm guessing, just guessing here, taking a wild swing at it. Um, you either, you're 100% confident that you can do this, you got the tools. And so, you know, I, don't, I wanna show a lot of detailed video on this type of stuff. But like, again, I think that you're, you're either a fabricator or you're not now if you're someone that's not and you're willing to try to become one i mean my assessment is i'll tell you right now before uh let me actually take this stuff off whoops what was that what was that little guy plastic thing oh <laughs> yeah it's part of the broken uh, piece up top so anyway um what was i gonna say uh i was going to say here that i'm gonna actually move this and get out of the way but um you know, this is probably an easy spot. Like I was talking about as far as welding goes, I think in one of my earlier clips was that if I do any welding here, I had heat, I think I was applying heat to it. This is just too thick to try and bend right here. I'm not even gonna try and do it. I'm probably gonna hit a hammer on one of these guys and break them. So I'm not gonna do that. Um, so basically, I'm not afraid to re-weld here and not worried about the heat. First of all, you're not gonna see back here, the headlight covers it. Um, and as far as like heat dissipation, there's a lot of metal. Here, I'm not worried about the bearings because this is so far kind of in the middle of the bottom bearing, top bearing, it's about two thirds up. But uh, I'm gonna take my grinder and I'm gonna try and cut this lobe off right here. And then over here on this side, cause I think I'll have a better chance at putting this on the vise and, uh, and making this thing uh, basically new again, if you will. I just can't do it here. So 
Uh, based off of my welding down here, that's my decision. All right, so I ground it up a little bit. Now I'm going to get it off of here, hopefully. Might have to wiggle it a little bit with the pliers. Right here. Oh, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Nice. So this thing, before I get too carried away, this thing does have a curve. So I imagine that this part, which you can kind of see a radius to it, also had a curve. So I'm gonna do my best to uh, try to, oh, this thing is so, Oh, so weird. I'm gonna try and do my best to hammer it and get it into like a, a Z shape, if you will. I'm gonna try and use a large socket, like a 26 millimeter socket to have a curve and try and hammer it onto that socket, one of my impact sockets, and see if I can get it. I'll probably try and heat it up a little bit too. That might help. So let's move the camera over to the uh, device area. Workbench is a little bit of a cluster, excusing me. Let's try and heat this guy up a little bit. Using map gas instead of propane, because map gas will get a little bit warmer. Hotter. All right guys, so like I said in the very beginning of this video series, I'm restoring this bike to, uh, to my standards. And so, uh, before I put this bracket back on, I, uh, I'm gonna clean up this bare metal and I'm gonna paint it. Even though when I weld, it may kind of just melt, heat up, go away. But I'm just hoping that there's gonna be some debris, um, some of that paint that's still just left there. Uh, so that way it'll uh, it'll help prevent any corrosion down the road for me or the new owner so I'm gonna get some spray paint actually I'm gonna mask it off I'm gonna mask off the bare metal here because uh, because I obviously want to weld to that I've already painted the back of the bracket so you know again the paint's going to get hot and do something when I weld it I'm gonna do a couple short bursts to try and not overheat it and get rid of the paint completely. But just so you know, if you ever do something like this, do your best to try and do short bursts with your welder to help prevent the area from getting super hot, super saturated. And uh, you could also get a nice uh, wet rag and, and after you hit every uh, every tack weld or whatever, you can, you can cool off that weld pretty quick to try and preserve paint. Not a huge issue in the end uh, for this specific area. So I'm just gonna get to it. All right. Just using a uh, Carlon Color Max paint and primer, satin black. Get a light little coat. Let that kind of dry for a few seconds. Come back again. Anyway, here's the uh, here's the bracket that I painted with the enamel on the back here. So I'll clean up the sides, get them bare metal, 
sides here, maybe just a little bit down here on the edge where I'm gonna end up welding. And then we'll put that bad boy right on there and I'll paint this over on. This thing's not that pretty, but uh, honestly, it's a lot better than how it, it would have been if I left it on, uh, on the bike. I mean, I put this on my giant like 30 millimeter socket and uh, I got that curvature back and both, both you know, this one and that one kind of match curvatures. Really hard to get this because it was, I don't even know what hit this, honestly. Whatever hit this, like it really jacked it up. And the headlight was, the headlight was still kind of intact. So it's like, well, it was intact. It was just a bracket that broke. So I don't know what it was. So I already unmasked the front bracket. Now I have to spray this one down here. And I wanna try and get on the inside a little bit. So that way, uh, that way, we call it. Um, you obviously don't want rust to happen. And so there's a little bit of bare metal. So I need to make sure that I cover it up best as I can. I'm not gonna make you talk. Come here. Come here up today. You gonna help me? Hmm? You gonna help me look pup? You gonna be the pup. 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 Yeah. Alright. I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit. I'll put one more coat on it and then I'll take all the stuff off off and then uh i gotta think about what i'm gonna do tomorrow i'm gonna start doing some things that are not the handlebars because i had to order the lower handlebar bracket probably be a week or two before that comes in so i might as well put the kickstand passenger peg foot peg driver all the things that were messed up i'll just start installing those tomorrow i guess so let's see tomorrow all right let's go ahead and start putting together the uh Driver's side peg. Actually, eh, before I forget, here is the two plugs for the rear bracket. Mm, you know what? A little bit of spit. Never hurt. Little bit of spit. That stuff is the good lube. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Don't be afraid. Put worse things in your mouth. I'm sure. Look at that. Look at that. Perfect. Day in there. Good. Okay. Now, what was I gonna do? Okay, so now we got this guy right here. And we got, I'm gonna look at the right side to see which peg or which, uh, okay, so the one with the holes is the passenger. This is the passenger. This is the drivers. So, let me go take a gander at the passengers and see what it looks like. All right, dang it, the, the right side. So, they actually recommend that you put, or recommend, it actually looks like you need to put the bracket on first before you, um, I think it goes like this. Yeah, because basically, if you look at it this way, you can't get a, oh, wait, nope. You can't get a tool in there to, re to remove that. So I gotta put this on the bike first figures i got the camera all set up so let me move everything over to the bike real quick all right so 
Here's the part number for the pin, right there. And here's the part number for the two bolts that actually, uh, they're, the they're for the passenger side bracket. One goes here and one goes, one goes there. But anyway, that's the part number. And uh, there's actually, I mean, four on this side, at least for this part number. I'm not sure how many total on the bike, but uh, four on the left side, four on the right side. So let's go ahead and get on with the bracket first. So the bracket's gonna go this way like this. So I'm using a six millimeter Allen. That's what the size is. Go ahead and put the bottom one in. And actually you could just pretty much spin it. Okay, get the next one in. Oops, there's that. Let me make sure it's actually the right way before I continue. Nope, it's the wrong way. <laughs> Looking at it, it's hitting the, the frame right here, so I was like, eh, maybe that's not the right way. I'm hoping that I don't gotta take this back off <laughs> when I try and put the uh, brake lever on there and the uh, clutch lever. That'd be a son of a gun if I had to take it back off. I hate that. Okay, so let me get a six millimeter wrench. And will it fit? Oh yeah. There we go. I gotta figure out how this goes in. There's a little tiny, I don't know if you can see it or not, there's a little tiny cutout right here. So um, I'm thinking it goes this way, and then this goes here. And I gotta put, let's see here, put this spring in here. If I did that, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking that's gonna be the way to do it. So let's put a little bit of Lee Bones uh, pin here. Just a little bit, you stay there. And then we'll put a little bit on the sides of this, just so that way we got a little bit and there's less friction. We'll get a little bit of dirt in there, but this is waterproof. And uh, if you wash your bike, just don't use a pressure washer down here, blast off the grease. That's pretty much the thought for anything that should be a pivot point and have some sort of lubrication or washer. All right, so now, I'm gonna put this right here. I'm gonna use my finger to hold the spring in. It's obviously not, um, you see, it's gonna be easy to, oh, my pin fell in the grease. That's all right. So, put this here. Oops, come on. Put this here. Go in, okay. And then, Let's see here, can I get that in there is the question. Is that even the right way? It might even be this way. Nope, wait, is it that way? Oh yeah, it might be that way, I think. Yeah, that looks like, like it's right. We get a little hammer, tap that in. Put the C-clip on down here. Here it is. All right, now, now what I want to do is, let's see here, oops. I think I want to put a little bit of, I could just spit on it. Put a little bit of silicone on there and it should go in just fine. 
Unless it's something that I can just do. Oh, look at that. That was simple. That was too simple, actually. Huh. Nice. Okay, so now let's get on with the uh, passenger bracket. All right. Here's the bracket. That goes there. Shield, which I believe it's like a 2.5 millimeter. What size is that? Oh, it's a five. Well, it's not in metric. It's five thirty seconds. All right, so. You have this uh, little doohickey here, which is uh, has two indentations, one right here and one right there. And so this goes uh, with the, the cam side, or the, the lump side pointing up. And it just slides right there in the hole, okay? And then uh, what I'm gonna do, actually, you know I'm gonna put some lube on either side of that just to make sure that we don't have any binding. It's all smooth. Put some more on there. All right, so, and then uh, I'll put some on the face of it too as well, because the ball rubs on the face. So you wanna have some lube right there. And those guys. All right, so now, um, big key thing here, you got a hole in there, so you drop your spring in. Oh crap, fell out and now it's bouncing everywhere. <laughs> okay, so you drop your spring in, in here, get in your hole. Go to your home, Billy Madison. All right, so, all right, so there's the ball. You see it, the bearing. Now, what you do is you go ahead and you try to, oh wait, I gotta put lube on this thing too. Don't lose your ball, whatever you do. Put some lube on the outside here. Okay. Go ahead and put that up right here. And then the ball should set on the spring, hopefully, once you get it. Here we go. There you go. Get your pin, lube it up a little bit. A lot of bit. A lot of this lube's gonna come off through use and wash and whatnot, so it's okay to put a little bit on there, be a little generous. Come on, let's see here. Pin doesn't want to go in, probably because of the powder coat. I'm gonna give a little bit of help. There we go. And then. That's all she wrote on that. And before you put your C-clip on, you want to do a little function check. Oh, there's some powder coat right there. But yeah, do a little function check. Make sure that it clicks and stops and it's down. Up position, down, up. Oh, that's smooth. Super smooth. Boop, boop. So now, get the C-clip on. Use a little flat blade screwdriver. I like to put my finger fingers on it as much as possible. Oh, you know what, and you can't see it maybe, but the, the actual cut line for that is sticking out. So I try and hit this in a little bit, just so it's, you put the clip flush against the bracket, put fingers on both sides, and just push from the back end and it's on there and then you can tap down the top part if you want do it a couple times money 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 wipe off the excess grease and move on to the next item whatever that may be